no glasses for this stream because I did not feel like taking my contacts out just to put my glasses back on. That's fair. Kitty chaos! Oh no, my video is chaos. This is not what I want to talk. It's dancing. It's dancing. Ah, that looks more like what I want. Yes, good. All right, and now let's look at your camera because one thing I wanna do is see if I can get it so it still looks nice, but also, wait, no, I don't want it bigger. I want to uncut. Cause like somewhere it's supposed to have your username. Oh, it's so tiny. It's so little. Hello, yeah, big like Puka, big Puka. No. All right, I think we're gonna just not worry about that, and at some later point, I will make actual text boxes to put below. Uh, my 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 trying to be big gesture was mistimed with when you made me big. Oh well. That oh, <laughs> that's fine. All right, we're close enough to having matching camera size, camera thingy sizes. Well, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. It's fine. All right, and then you go. So at least we are now both properly visible. Actually, yeah. I wanna change this. Oh, one little. thing. So, so two two of my long term goals on Twitch are I have sorted through a bunch of my books and I figured out which ones are out of copyright. Ooh, yay! So that um, you wanna do like reading? I wanna do I wanna do some reading at like the start of my streams that because cool. I enjoy it. And also, I have like. I have an old copy of Wuthering Heights. I've got an old oh, wow. copy of um, The English in England and The Good Earth and Alice in Wonderland. Nice. And I found right. my big Grimm's compendium. Our plan is to do a short game, but one for each game. Yeah. So we're sticking with second term, though, because that's how you get the Polaroids. Um, do, 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 and I have, like I said, I have a very elaborate thingy thing, which I will now pull back up, uh, that has all of the everything mm -hmm. for the- I mean, we can also, like, not obsess and just go, like, full steam ahead. That's fair. I have endings I want to unlock still, so That's I fair. shall have my thing, and because it's all in one spreadsheet, it actually shouldn't take me too long, which is part of why I'm excited about it. Okay, so. that's fine then. And then we'll do the other ones just like chaos. Yeah. Uh, do we want to maybe switch off who does the narration? Sure. All right. Do you want to do it first or second? I don't care. We can flip a coin or- Flip a coin! Flip a coin! I don't have an actual coin, but I do have a dice rolling app. Would you like to be odds or evens? Evens! Hana is evens. I'm odd. But um. I'm... <laughs> It's a one. Ah, uh, it's me. All right. <clears throat> ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are you? I am the blue one. Johanna. Actually, actually, wait. No, no, because I, I was like, maybe I could unlock more Polaroids if I... No, that's your name. Why am I typing your name? <laughs> Did I mention this was a chaos -y? It's fine. Oh, it's fine. Day. This is double gremlins, no waiting. Yes. All there is. Gremlin. And I'm nice. having a slightly chaosy gremlin, gremlin-y day, so more so than usual, even. Oh man. Yeah. All right, so we'll have to s split the voices. Even we'll have to take over John's voices. That's fine. All right. And we're yet to experience its ultimate challenge: the monster prom. 
I remember it clearly. Two weeks were left. And as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Okay. Do you want to take... So we've got Scott, Damien, and uh, Calculester. And, and Coach. And, yeah, well, and a few uh, non-these characters. Um, how do you feel about your ability to do robot voice? I feel more able to do robot voice than um, other options, probably. I'm perfectly okay. will willing to try. All right, well, um, I'll, I'll just, I'll grab Scott, because why not? I right, go for Scott it. Scott Howell, and I'll probably do it somewhat like how John does it, which I don't know I who think, he's facing it on. I think the only but... thing I'd say is because I'm usually what's-her-butt, the, the demon girl... I don't want to try and do Damien and the Demon Girl because I will mangle okay. both accents. If I will take Scott and Damien. You take uh, Calculester? Sure. All right. Scott I'll Howell, 21. A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Polly got you. 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Let's see if I can imitate John imitating a character that I don't know. <laughs> Damien LeVay. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. fire. I, you know what? No, it's just going to end up Irish Scottish amalgam. Thank you, Tom. That's fine. I think that's fine. I'll be trying, but viewers do not expect as good a voice as Johnny's. Liam the Lioncart, 400. <laughs> a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid the fact that he was truly a lovable bark. Zoe forever? An eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Galhula Darhula Packard, version 1.0. A library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. And Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean, self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? We only had two weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had two weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. <laughs> But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to stop. Quiz time! Alright, I'm going to be going for a secret ending. Do you want to also do a secret ending? Sure, that sounds great. Okay, so basically for you, it'll just be whatever you have available in the shop, I think. Um, so if we have the option for money, we should take that. All right, welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we are now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Hello. One day you wake up and you've swapped bodies with your mom in a very 90s film fashion. What is the worst thing that could happen? Oh my goodness. My mom is such a metalhead. That's adorable. Meeting with all my friends and actually being more popular than me. Alright. Control. What? Aw, oh, this one isn't in the thing. Curses. Alright, we'll have to guess. Um, none of them seem to be money, so that probably is boldness. That one is probably, you know, I like the metalhead thing. I it's think funny. This one, yeah, charming. All right. 
For your soul emoji. The emoji that speaks the truth of your soul! Hmm. <laughs> what? I, the bottom one is either is either Zoe or Polly. I don't even. Yeah, no, these are uh, skills still, but like. So, but like, either of them would say that. It's true. All right, I. You know what? I don't care because none of these are money. Um. Let's go with the snowman, because that mofo is in the middle of a blizzard, and he's effing smiling. He doesn't give an F about blizzards. And he has a kick-ass hat. Octopus. Not for the reasons given, but because octopus. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Obviously, spicy chocolate is Damien. Mm-hmm. Um... I will be the taste of success. Are you going for Vera then? No, I'm actually gonna go for, um, I'm thinking I might go for Valerie actually. Which means that totally works. Valerie? That's the shopkeeper. Oh, nice. I unlocked um, the ability to go out, go, uh, for her route. Nice. Um. Um, and you're not locked into whatever you select here. That's fair. I spicy chocolate. Huh? I, I I actually would eat spicy chocolate. So fair. Yeah, I just went with whatever one sounded most fun. Yeah. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. <laughs> <laughs> the abstract concept of gratefulness. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, Artificial by Picasso. Silly toy that makes silly noises. Honestly, yes. <laughs> Alright. So, there is no shopkeeper yet, it looks like. It's still loading on my end. Okay. Probably uh -huh. lunch will be where I first have the opportunity. That makes sense. So maybe mine for money? Mm. Yes. And I'll do something random. Oh wait, I don't need money. We were gonna have you do a different secret ending, so you should mine for money. Yes. Okay. So, whatever. Charm. Because why not? It's my lowest stat. That works. I just kind of skipped that because that's just the normal ones. Later, you see Vera cackling to herself in the hallway. Which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. Just practicing my prom queen acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing way beneath me. However, considering how much meaning the other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity biatch thinking she's better than I am. Plus, it's not bad branding either. I could see using a victory to start a line of successful prom queen accessories guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives to take out your opponents. <laughs> oh, Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual to ensure my win. Oh, this is a secret ending. That's too bad. I, Sorry, Vera. I've already gotten this secret ending and I want to romance the shopkeeper. That's... I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is where exactly I can find the details for a proper blood ritual. I'm gonna just, because it doesn't matter, because I'm not trying to romance. Well, it will make me lose stats, I guess. Mm. You wanna fail. You just don't wanna yeah. get locked into not what you wanna do. It's fine. Um, do, do, do. So, Vera. This is. Vera's, uh, this is Vera's prom thingy. Bloody Queen, yes. So, ch top one's charmed, bottom one's smart. And I am definitely smarter than... <laughs> literally just search the internet? Like, that's literally what it's there for? Oh, right. Good call. Sometimes you get so caught up in the grand scheme of exploiting blood magic to secure a petty victory that you forget about the little things. 
You and Vera scamper over to the library to put the school's computers to good use for once. For real, does anyone at this school use school resources for educational purposes? Hmm, let's just search. Blood magic to guarantee prom queen victory over basic bitch biatches to maintain social status. That's pretty clear, right? Couldn't possibly be clearer. Seems like we're going to need the blood of a former prom queen, the tongue of a goat, and the earrings of an ancient goddess. Not exactly stuff that's going to be lying around, but when you're destined to be prom queen, you make it work. Not that I'm destined to be prom queen, or I wouldn't have to do blood magic in the first place, but hey, when you want to achieve greatness, you make your own destiny. You check the shop, I'll grab a goat, and we'll meet up in the bathrooms to cut its tongue out and get this party started. Okay, so you need to not go to the bathrooms. Yep, pretty much. And not buy the thing in the shop, which is the bloody tampon. Noted. Yep, you do the bitcoins. Money! You hear a cry of anguish. Sounds like several of your friends are getting their butts kicked in a video game, and it is! You find Scott, Damien, Liam, and the Slayer? They're playing Federation of Fables, the infamous super competitive MOBA. <laughs> if I get to date the Slayer while Scott's not there, I'm gonna feel really bad. Oh, fair. Uh, you mean John, but yes. John. That would be. They spot you. Hmm. All right. It's all right. It's all right. Eating dinner at the same time as stream. Hey, you, Fuka. Man, I'm so bad at this accent. We need your help. We can't let these noobs win. Should I be Slayer? Sure. It's true. This is so serious that we've put our few aside to team up against a greater evil. 13-year-old brats that think they're better than us at FOF. We were kicking their asses, but their jug jungler used a super special skill on our mage that cursed- You know what? He's just gonna be Irish now. That cursed him to roam the desert for 40 years. In real life! FOF developers are crazy as app. This game is insane. We need to destroy- We need to destroy their base soon or we'll lose! Or uh, you can trust me. I'm playing Ra Wally Rex, the Dino Diplomat. I'm in negotiations with this one. If we reach an agreement, the senseless bloodbath will end in a peaceful truce. <laughs> we need to destroy their base before Liam does his lame diplomatic thing! I'm Joe the Hole Digger! I'm digging holes to see what happens! I might find a bone! Oh, <laughs> bless! Precious. That won't help us in any way, wolf boy. Not if I can't find a super cool bone. Come on, Puka, join this alliance. Let's fight the good fight. I don't have no idea what Damien's accent is for me. <laughs> Nothing. No idea. It all comes down to making the right choice. Which absurd character will be the game changer in this match? Mm -hmm. Give me a sec, I might be able to find you. Yeah, that looks like a group. Alright. Um, Gary the game dev is creative and no one is fun. You are way I more fun. Lot, I have a lot more fun than yep. I have creative. So, let's go. Dance! <laughs> Dance! What the hell are you doing? Do you even understand how this game works? Dancing. Or is it? You must admit, they know their dance moves. Suddenly a message pops up on your screen. It says, Sweet dance moves recognized. Yes. What? No time to ask! You need to keep your dance moves on point. What the fuck did the <laughs> FOF creators take when designing this game? Perfect score! Victory by dance! Huh! Who knew? You can actually win by dancing! Quite an unexpected strategy. I applaud you. Fuck yeah! You rock! Everyone joins your dance! 
Your victory dance is so good, the enemy team gets permaban from FOF. You gain plus two creativity and one font. Sweet. All right. For absolute nonsense. All right, okay. random. Yeah. All right, let's see what secret ending I have access to. Boop. Oh, right, right. No, I'm romancing Valerie, so I know what I have to do. I'm just here to say hi. But actually, I did unlock the fairy in the bottle. Oh, nice. But I only have five money, and I have already done all of the events that only require five money. By the way, the mask is how you get the uh, interdimensional prince Damien Polly ending. Aha. Or not Damien, sorry, Dimitri. Dimitri and oh, Interventional Dimension Yes. That's so anyway, wonderful. all I need to do is leave. Do -do. All right. Who so I do one? realize that if we're trying to have you do a second, a secret ending through the shop as well, you'll have to do it next round. So go wherever That's you feel. Go wherever your heart tells you. I have seven money. Um, what secret ending should I go for? Um, I just talk to whoever I feel like. I figure we'll see what you've got available. You could do okay. the lemon ending. What's the lemon? Um, that would actually require Scott or Miranda. Okay, I'll go talk to Scott because he's adorable. Watching Vera eat is usually pretty disturbing. Her snakes eat at the same time she does. But at least it's usually quiet. This time, however, Scott is doing his best to change that. Go, lefty! Gobble that mouse! No, no, watch out for Wiggles coming up from behind! Use that tongue! Go! <laughs> Ugh, he does this every week or so, whenever my snakes need a meal. He seems to think snake eating in contests are a competitive sport. Also, I don't think he realizes that an actual snake eating contest would probably involve people eating snakes. I tried charging him for tickets to get him to stop, but he actually pays to do this. That's why she's putting up with it! Adorable. Awesome. He keeps track of each snake's statistics on a little index card. He's even given them names. Go Slither! Go Bendy! Go Sanchez! Go Snake Snake! Those aren't their names. God. No matter how much he pays for the tickets, it isn't enough. And yet she lets him do it because she she paid, he told him no, oh, man. Vera. Yep. For 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 who you are, you're sometimes remarkably pure. Yep. Seems like a really tense situation. You resolve it in the only way you know how by opening your mouth and yelling. Oh oh oh! Let's see. Do do do! I totally forgot to look this up because I was uh, lunchtime. I'm sorry, and... also I really want to just go, you snake, 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 eat that food and stay awake. Scott meets uh, and uh, Vera. Eating cheerleader, yeah? No, snake yeah. fan, right? Snake yes, fan. okay. Oh, this is just an either or. So snake, snake, snake is the Scott answer. Yeah. Snake, 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 eat because... that food and stay awake. Because, 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 snick, 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 snick. Snick, 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 eat that food and stay awake! That's the spirit! Get your head in the game, Sanchez! Do snakes have heads, or are they just neck and face? Baby. Whoa, check it out! Bendy's been behind all season! With a record low BMI! Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's body mass <sighs> index. The index is because I wrote it on this index card. I love it. But now she's hungry for victory. Let's go, Bendy. Swallow that glory. The snakes really do seem to enjoy having an audience. They're really hamming it up. Or should it be snaking it up? <laughs> Your wild cheering motivates Bendy to really go all out. She tries to grab the mouse out of Lucky's jaws, but the two end up tearing it in half. Ah, uh, my scalp! It'll take my snake charmer slash hairdresser hours to get those organs out. <sighs> oh, Major Fowl, I'm Bendy there. 
She's gonna be out for the rest of the season. Damn right she is! I'm having her muzzled! And her name is Spirulina! By the time Vera has cleaned up the blood and run off, she's made plans to meet with Scott to watch the next match. Amazing. She's gonna make you pay, but... You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's absolutely gonna make you pay. <laughs> totally worth it. That was ridiculous. In all the best ways. Alrighty. Here we go. Alright, go talk to cat friend. Tell me things. <laughs> Let's face it. You're cro or are you are you her or my hair? Because you can't. See I don't care. I mean it's she does different things for each person, so you're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Oh man, there's not much here. Ooh, there's right. I cannot afford the bag o' regular, and I cannot afford the penguin mask. Gasp! You do not have any event items yet. All right, romance, Scott. Which item is good for romance, think Scott? Um, I think it. Uh, it. Oh, right. It genuinely doesn't matter. All you need for Scott is high hearts. Oh. So, well, I buy so whatever you feel anyway. like. I want to spend some money. Maybe get the weird glasses. I think they're fun. And the tattoo is um, bold, maybe? I can get the thing you need for Vera, only I don't want it. Yeah, no. Glasses. It will be the funnest. Mm hmm. Yeah, obviously I need to play this game more. There were zero event items. Yeah, that was a bummer. I expected you'd have at least one or two. You've played it yeah. enough times with us, yeah, I would have thought, but... Too bad anyway. I couldn't afford the penguin mask. I could have gotten that one ending before. So I did get the adorable, like, sitting on the beach ending. So that's that's cool. true. I like that one. Alright, I'm just gonna pull up the one I'm going for, and I'm going to need to be creative and or bold and or charming and or have money. Eh, I'll grab some extra money. That day you spent some time- oh, yeah, we're skipping those. Do do do, start kicker. You spot Vera at the computer next to you, deep in contemplation. You offer her a penny for your thoughts. My thoughts are worth significantly more than a penny, but I'll invoice you later. I'm trying to launch a new legitimate business venture. I'm sorry, I mean scam. But I'm not sure how best to recruit Gust customers. I I'm sorry, I meant to say gullible suckers. I've got no trouble finding victims in real life. My snakes use their tongues to smell weakness. <laughs> but snakes can't use their tongues on the internet. I know, I was surprised by that as well. So, any ideas? Alright, fashion better. Alright, let's see. Events, base game. Kind of yeah. like the like legit. Are you suckers ready to join me? Mm. That one's do, funny do. because like it's up front. Do, do, do. It should be here some scam victim. Yeah. Okay. So top one's creative, bottom one's bold. And I am just slightly more creative than bold. Fair enough. A flashing banner ad that says, You will literally die if you don't click this ad right now. A marvelous idea. I can run it on medical websites. And I can really sell the lie by having anyone who doesn't click the ad killed. Soon everyone will be clicking it. A whole world full of suckers. You know, they say a sucker is born every minute, but we all know that's hardly enough suckers. Suckers must be made, like Frankenstein's monster, but far more lucrative. <gasps> Vera commissions you to produce the banner ad, which takes you like four minutes in MS Paint, and you gain money and creativity. That's hilarious. Nice. You have so much money now, oh my gosh. 
Well, that's not a bad thing for the battery. I, yeah, I'm not complaining. I was like, whoa. You're practicing your moves against the invisible ninjas, who are totally real and totally after you, when you spy a much more visible threat. Yo, fuck hammer! I need your advice about something. Do you know what the most powerful force on Earth is? Stronger than anvils or swords or my nine-pack abs? It's love! And I think I might just be in it with your buddy Puka. And sure, love is already hardcore just because the feelings are so strong and that's badass. But the love will be doubly as strong and badass if it turns out Puka is as hardcore as I think they are. You're not going for Damien though, are you? I mean, he's adorable too. Sure. I mean, you have to... How's your boldness and... Let's see. I can't check right now. Only you, yep. you have the power. No, to you do. Me. I think he's boldness and fun. And you do have enough fun. So if you just upped your boldness. What ton of fun. Yeah. All right. I sure, mean, well, I'll derail onto Damien's path. Whatever. I didn't come into this with a plan. I mean, we also, you know, can still put you on Scott's path, even with Damien liking you. You can just be popular. And of course, there's really the only way to judge a person's true soul. You know them pretty well. Do you know what their inter inner murder weapon would be? Um, duh, of course you do. By which you mean you're happy to totally make it up on the spot. So now's the time to decide Puka's fate! Fun, right? Don't be a jerk, unless you want to, in which case, totally go for it. Mmm. I don't know, which do you like better? Cardiovascular. That's hilarious. Major cardiovascular diseases! Puka is the ultimate murderer. The leading cause of death worldwide and something capable of catching up to tough mofos who have survived everything else. Damn! I wouldn't have even thought of that. If major cardiovascular diseases were a knife, they would be the sharpest and deadliest knife ever. If they were a sword, they would be two katanas. If they were a gun, they would be an atomic bomb. <laughs> wow! A cardiovascular disease was raging in Puka this entire time, and I never even knew it! Well, that's confusingly worded, to say the least. But luckily, since you were the one who started this metaphor, you know that Puka isn't likely to die, unless they are dying to go to prom with Damien, in which case, bam! You're welcome, Puka! And you gain three boldness. Because why not? That said, I am going to vote that you go for Scott after all, just because uh, voicing Damien is not for me. Fair enough. I am barely holding on right. as I attempt to do his voice. Oh that crap, do totally I have enough? I'm I not... trying to figure out if there are other polyamorous endings. I'm not finding Shoot, we might actually have too uh, short a time for me to do what I want to do. Anyway, anywhere but where Valerie is. So right. anywhere but the auditorium. So I need boldness for Yes, Damien. if you want Damien, you need boldness. If you want Scott, need... you just need hearts. Which means and I need to hope matter. I encounter him, and he often shows up there. Oh, uh, the people who will show up are whoever you have the highest affection rating with, really. So you, you might get a Damien and Scott, and then you have to choose. I mean, that sounds adorable, too, so we'll go for that. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathroom. Yeah. I don't know why I like to read that one every one time, but it gives me- it, I think it's funny. You give no poops, but you gain two boldness. Okay, so it seems that you are more Damien. <laughs> Alright. Calculester wanders in. He likes to pretend to pee because it makes him feel alive, but stops dead when he sees what Damien and Vera are doing. Oh. Friend, Damien, friend, Vera, why are you affixing a battle axe to the chassis of a small and lovable robotlet? Calculester? Just the machine I wanted to see. And actually, if you'd like, I can take Damien and you can take over the narrator. I will only have a problem if we run into into the blue demon lady. Alright, um, yeah. Uh, you can still do the narrator. We'll do the narr whoever is the narrator on our turn, and if you could take Damien off my hands, I'd appreciate it. I don't He'll know if you- He'll just cover this robot and wait and so we can win season 16 of Bot Battle. I am not sure that is a good idea. 
but our goals are noble. I intend to spend the prize money on an elegant jacket made of several seals. Yeah, and I just want to hack up a bunch of nerds' property. I am sorry, pal, but I do not support bot on bot violence. So ah! you... It's you your did. turn, so you should still read the narrator. Suddenly, the tiny killer robot springs to life and embraces Calculester's leg with its scorpion claws. Papa. It chirps. His name is Computerance, and I must protect him. Ah -ha -ha. That settles it then. Better come up with an unbeatable strategy to make sure little Terrence doesn't get hurt in the turn. Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Disguise him as a human is smart, and the other one is charm. You are equal! Oh no! Pick whichever one you like best and hope for the best! I don't want him to get attacked at all, and this way he's not forced to fight. Oh, yay! One. What a brilliant plan. Our greatest weakness will become Computerence's greatest strength. But... Where will we find a convincing human disguise? Good question. I'd help, but all the human skins I've got are too big. Don't worry, I have a wide array of small and extra small human skins to choose from. Uh, Vera. You're going to hell, Vera. How dare you? I am a legitimate businesswoman! No, I mean, I'm inviting you over to my house so you can show me how you got so many bad skins. That rules! <laughs> I have no further questions. You do, but it's probably wiser not to ask them. You gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well! Anyway. Wow. Hi, Valerie! Let's face it, you're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway, so why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Alrighty. Exit. You know what my favorite thing in the world is? People who buy my stuff. Be one or be gone. Random. Random. Yeah, so I have to hit that. enter. Yeah. Alright. This should be my last time. Good old Pengu! What's it gonna be today? Nothing! Okay, this is it. I get you're here for me and not my stuff. Fair enough. Next time you'll just get me. No shop. Let's see if you're less annoying then. Oh, I'm not gonna have enough to actually get all through all of the events, but we'll still get to see the beginning of the route, and it'll be great. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. Because it I, cause I took it one time? No, I think I wouldn't have had time anyway. Oh. Great. Um. Because I need to be able to talk to her three times, and then have three events happen. And that's a lot. Mm, got it. For a short game. I didn't really think it through. Got it, got it. I will talk to Scott. Maybe? At some point- can you date the coven? I'm not sure. If, uh, you can date Faith or Hope. That's definitely a thing. Okay. But I don't know if you can date the whole coven. Okay. Um, I want to see what nonsense Scott and Vera are up to. Fair enough. Let's see what happens. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of quinoa to her mouth. She brings one from home, when? Food, fork, six, eight! Who do we- Who do we deli- Deliciate! Eating! Eating! Yay! Eating! <laughs> ah! Scott, what on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school! Oh, Scott. What caused this obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? Mm -hmm. A 
Everything requires cheerleading, silly! That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders! But I can see my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet! That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading! I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it! I must not be cheerleading hard enough! Hey friend, maybe you can help me! Ah, oh, Scott, I adore you, but oh my goodness, you need to let Vera eat in peace. On the other oh. hand, the problem is clearly that you're not dressed up as a giant salad. I- we might get Scott in the tree costume again, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Vera, but tree costume- Oh, yeah, that makes sense! I mean, sports cheerleaders dress like giant steaks and drumsticks all the time! Or maybe that's just how they look when I'm really hungry. Whatever, let's dress up! Luckily-, Luckily Oh, yeah, you're sorry. Go for it. Luckily, the school keeps some giant vegetable costumes in the auditorium for health presentations. You snag them and start cheering. Beats! Aggressive! Eat! Beats! Aggressive! There aren't even any beets in this salad! It's just quinoa and the tears of my enemies! Oh my god, Vera. Vera's pissed, but she does eat her salad really fast. Just you'll leave her alone. Hooray for cheerleading! It worked! Alrighty. Uh, classic. That was all the best levels of dumb. Yeah, if I thought it through, I would have done another item Very event, cool. but... Sorry. No, no, that's on me. I didn't plan it out properly. That's okay. I will go to prom alone and have a lovely time. I mean, if you can get your stats high enough, you could probably still, like, snag someone. No, because I need hearts. Oh, fair. You see Calculus are standing apart from the rave, trembling and shaking as though malfunctioning. Hello, Pengu. I am not malfunctioning at all. I am merely attempting to dance. But my attempts are not going well. I only know two dances. The robot and the robo boogie. In my quest to acquire all organic life form knowledge, I wish to learn new dances, but it would seem my programming is not conducive to it. Oh. I feel that I have started to understand feelings, as evidenced by the fact that I began the previous sentence with I feel. But could it be that dance is beyond feeling? You remind Calculester that when emotion is too great for people to speak, they sing. Too great to sing, they dance. So he is correct. As the song says, are we robot or are we dancer? In order to be truly alive, I must learn to dance. Will you help me, Pangu? Heck yeah, you will! How else will you dance with Calculester at prom? Uh, Let so me see, do like I have? Answer. I actually might have enough to get Calculester. Calculester is dorbs! But you're no dancer. You spend all your rehearsal time worrying about dodgeball, and all your dodgeball time worrying about playing poker in the library. <laughs> Better recruit a friend to help you help Calculester learn the true meaning of life through dance. Hmm. Let's see. Those options, though. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. All right, so we have Calculester. Not that, not that. No, no. New dance. Vera requires money, Liam requires charm. You'll yeah, Vera. Bribe Vera to take us into the heart of voguing. And I'm going to take a minute and do some PT because I just realized it's eight. Okay. The time has definitely passed. I my forgot to set my timer. All right, well. It's fine. 
I'm really eat. not joking about this PT routine basically being putting on the wrist in slow-mo. Fair. I'm gonna go see if there is more food for dinner, because I am snacking on pecans, and they are delicious, but I could also have more dinner. Maybe. It's important. I will find out. Continue your PT oh, routine, and I will be right back. <laughs> This is where, if we thought of it, we could do stream raiders, but we did not think of it. Oh well. I am returned, and alas, there is no more dinner. I shall snack on. I I shall, I shall survive on pecans. Mm, they are delicious. All right. I have always felt that Gira is my classmate closest to a robot. She does not seem to experience emotions quite the same way others do. Did someone say power hungry sociopath? He's so happy. No. But if you would be so kind as to instruct me in the art of voguing, I believe that I will know the true meaning of life. Oh, Calculester. Voguing, eh? Well, you've come to the right Gorgon. A group of fierce drag queens taught me how to vogue after I saved them from a mob by teaching them how to weaponize glitter. All right. But what's in it for me? Engu and I have assembled the following offerings. Several monster dollars, a fashionable Camara scale wristwatch, and a list of all your enemy's greatest fears. Sold to the robot and the nerd! Vera teaches you both to vogue, and indeed, you both feel much more alive. Hopefully, you and Calculester will repeat your voguing performance at prom! In the meantime, take two creativity and one fun. Nice. Alright, maybe I can last minute pull for Calculester. Yeah. Alright. Acha gotcha, where are you? I don't know quite what to do. Tree costume, please! That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves had descended to give you a figurative good job. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. It's later when you're minding your own business and definitely not doodling pictures of Damien in your notebook. When you see Damien making his way over to you, at which point you definitely do not need to hide your drawing. Yo, so here's the thing. You know I think most people are pretty much 100% awful F-doors. I actually think you're only 70% awful <laughs> F-doors. Stops. In fact, I actually think you're clean rad. Aww. I've been meaning to get a new tattoo since nothing's as rad as intentionally sticking needles into yourself to create a permanent image on your skin for F and ever. And I thought maybe we could get matching tattoos if we can come up with something rad for us. Oh, well, gee, oh, gee, oh, gee, your chance to wasn't for Alchemist Damien. How awesome you are! You don't mm -hmm. have to say. Time to suggest the baddest, raddest, maddest tattoo of all time, which is... Alright, top one. The on-fire pentagram is bold and the sea cucumber is fun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Damien, for getting sea cucumbers. I have so much fun. It's true. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah! Sea cucumbers! 
Stick your cucumbers, expel their organs! Just like my enemies, when I destroy them! Nothing could be louder than getting stubborn needles to give me a permanent reminder of my skinnick violence. Except knowing that my lad pal Toka has the same organ expelling creature needles stabbed into their body too. Oh, rad pal. From <laughs> being in this practice of your Shakespearean sonnet. Good thing you know your sea creatures, because now you and Damien are on a fast track to marine biology inspired paradise. Aw, yeah. You gain plus two creativity, plus one charm, and a matching tattoo of the sickest animal of all, just like Damien has. Boom! Alright, so my one question is if you're technically bold enough. I probably need more boldness. Oh, um, no, you're not bold enough. Oh, uh, well. If you're fun and you're bold were swapped, you'd be fine. Oh, well. You can say no. All right, well, I'm gonna try asking Calculester. All right, shall I ask Damien and get shot down? Uh, you could see if you have enough hearts for Scott. Oh, We'd no. get, we might get a new Polaroid if you do. All right, let's try it. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Oh, I see. There's oh, excuse. Not enough hearts. You see, Pengu, my family acquaintance has nondescript mild to serious disease, and so I cannot attend this social event that I don't want to attend with you. I'm deeply sorry. Has excuse been convincing? Yes, no. Hmm. That's It'll amazing! Seem... It all seemed pretty bleak, but you're a natural fighter, so you fought for the right to marry your own hand. Oh, no, I'm not going to read the rest of that. You're a natural fighter, so you fought to be happy alone. Yay. All right. You finally plug up your courage and ask your beloved to the monster prom. Uh, prom? Oh, sorry, it's you. Uh, prom? I don't know a lot about math, bro. But you plus me seems to equal a great night! Let me check our math book to be sure! That isn't a correct formula, but Scott is still thrilled for your upcoming prom date. Aww! Jeez! <laughs> prom night was the best. The two of you got lost on your way to school, and ended up having a crazy misadventure in a dungeon. <laughs> because why not? I, to be fair, I guess if anyone was going to get isekai it would be Scott, because he's got that himbo thing going. It's true. By the time you finally arrived at prom, your bombs were tighter than ever. You learned a lot about Scott. Turns out that aside from sports and cheerleading, he also loves the sky and the stars. He gives his own name to constellations, and if he knew the word astronomer, you're sure he would love to be one someday. Aww. I'm not gonna read those best ats. I got Scott got best at cheerleading when cheerleading is neither required nor wanted, which is cute. Yes. All right. All right. There's the group shot. It's always yep. The same. Violet and Tate. Is it Tate or Tail? I don't know. Their relationship is actually very unsettling. Violet and Tate. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just skip this bit. Oh, shoot, shoot, I went past the thingy thing. I got a calculus for one, but who knows what it was? Aw. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. JK. Oh, JK, he became an athlete, duh. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and as good-hearted as ever. Scott became a world-renowned athlete, but he ended his career to come back to his hometown and take on the job of the athlete he admired the most. Now he's back in high school again, working as the coach! Oh! Damien became an interior designer specializing in torture machines. Last month, Vogue magazine called his products the refined marriage between macabre and chic. <laughs> Good for him! Sorry, sorry. Calculus to rule out a robot uprising, but it was like a nice uprising. They didn't riot or kill people, they just lately opted to have more rights and equal pay. Everything was fine until some monsters led a rebellion to kill robots because they were rude robo racists. But everything ended up just fine because Calculus traveled back in time took care of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. 
Damien found peace in the most unexpected way. He kept punching everything till one day he punched his own anger to death. <laughs> he wrote a book about it. Amazing. Alrighty. You can read the ending bits if you want, but um, skip no, ahead. Let's, let's, let's move on to the next. Yeah. Thing. I'm going to let that play a little longer and I'm going to update my thingy thingy thing. All right. All right. I still don't know a good way to. Oh, I, I did skip it. Okay. Got one new image. Might have been the Polaroid of you, of uh, your character and Scott. That would be nice. In which case, I'm gonna check it real quick. In gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. I skipped right past wherever it was. New. It should have a one that says new. And I'm just not seeing it. The new would be on the There it is! Aww! Aww! It's your character and Scott playing paintball! Make it big! Oh my goodness! Together we will survive! So cute! <laughs> Actually, do you want to see a couple of the ones I have unlocked in my solo playthroughs? Yes. Oh, I, I unlocked have... Lemon! The Lemon ending. Oh, good. Okay. Okay, so. I and have I... every single one with blue. Nice. The Damien and Blue one is so fucking cute! With you, everything is more beautiful. Aww. And then with Liam, I can picture happiness with you while he is taking food photos. Aww. No one touches my Miri! Hello. I think I got this one on a stream before, but you're full of surprises. That's so cute. My furry cutie patootie. Beach day. And I love this one. No, one, no day feels rainy with you. And then I got a couple of the red ones. Aww. My purple dork. And fire and water, unexpectedly perfect. Ugly crying at the movies, it's very cute. Oh my god. <laughs> I think that's all the ones that I got that were not at all on stream. Excellent. Anyway, yes, all right, next one, next one. We might actually only get through one and two, but that's okay. We'll see. Okay, Doggy. games and monster camp. Monster prom two, monster camp. Yes, monster prom. Do, 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 Go to Steam Library. Monster prom two, monster camp, play. Oh, hey, actually, you know, I've never played this game on stream. I might have to add it. <gasps> Excitement. Oh, that's so loud! Oh, Jesus. Game capture. Uh, that's great, that's great. Oh, studying. Jesus. Sorry, I'm turning off your sound effects and your voices. Our own sounds in this. I don't, I don't mind the sound effects. Okay, music is now much more manageable. <coughs> oh, streamer mode will replace the credit song with safe to stream theme. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> Where? Oh, yes, streamer mode on, please. <coughs> Alrighty. Online. All right, and we want specific, and we want make your own voices. Monster camp, and then we want monster camp to be smaller, transform to fit to screen, and then we want it to be below everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Games. There we go. 
All right. What does customize game do? <gasps> you can filter things out! Wait, what? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Go to customize game. There is... Ah, oh, okay, so Damien apparently has a bee costume, which you can do sexy or super sexy. I'm good with sexy. Not super sexy. Um... Okay, so... I don't mind drugs. Uh, so, trigger warning filters only affect regular events. They won't filter special plotline events, secret endings, or non-event texts, such as gossip or icebreakers. That seems fair. Um, yeah. But, frankly, I'm gonna block toilet humor. I'm not big on bodily fluids. Okay. Um, Should I see. also block it? Are you hosting or am I? I don't know if it I'm hosting. Happen. Um, okay. let's see. Two graphic filters events with written depictions of sex and or violence that some may find too graphic. To be clear, the game has tons of both, but these are for ones that may we think may be too much for some people. Yeah, alright. I'm gonna block too graphic, especially because it's it's not violence I could maybe handle, but sex is sometimes a little much. Yeah. I am, you know, there are horrible people in this game and that doesn't bother me. Oh, you can filter out monster prom references in case you don't want spoilers. Yes. Yeah, alright, so I, I'm spoilers. gonna filter toilet humor and graphic violence slash uh, sexual things. But I'll leave I... drugs, horrible people, and monster prom references. Alrighty, let's go. Uh, do you wanna G chat me the code or just like whatever? Nah. Make your own voice. Oh, yeah. I don't think we have enough people to, to worry about it. I don't think so either. No. It's time. Alright, 1530. 1530, yo! And since hey. I'm hosting, it's got my blocks. Excellent. Oh my, um, there is short, medium, and full. All right, so to be clear, this is, as far as I am aware, the very first time either me or Puka is playing this game. Correcto mundo. So that said, we should definitely do a shorter game, because short game is still long here. Yeah. Also, let me you just... You do the intro. Um, I'm just going to check the guides real quick, see if there is a... <laughs> Walkthroughs, that sounds right. Um, complete monster camp event and outcome guides. Perfect. All right. We got one ready to go. Ooh. Ah, Camp Spooky. The stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then, we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on the way to camp. Is that one of Blue's arms up there? <laughs> sure, yes, Blue has in fact packed a spare arm in the suitcase. That is delightful. Anyway. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days, while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Aww. Everyone's camp outfits are so damn cute! Yeah, y'all. I mean, they're basically the same outfits, but everyone on the bus are so darn cute. Like, yeah, looking at that, it's like, wearing the same outfit, but really cute and on a bus. Yes. Ooh, I'm light blue now. Actually, you know, I was they before, I'll do she now. Sure, sure. <gasps> you can pick items! Oh, whoa! I want the sword of Roar! Roar. Roar. Roar! And let's see, uh, I think also the totally fine ukulele. Oh, they give you stats. I see, I see. This is instead of the, okay, do I want chess or do I want uranium li lipstick? I feel like my character would actually be fine with uranium, uranium yeah. lipstick. So let's do it. Sounds like I'm going to be pretty bold. All right. Um, be they. <laughs> it's a song puppet. 
cult ring, magma trekking boots. Oh, the mm -hmm. cult ring is sold in the store in Monster Prom, in the first Monster Prom. BFF bracelet kit, north facing moth, fake noble title, bonies, marshmallows. I need the BFF bracelets because I absolutely loved making those as a kid. Um, I kind of want the stories. And do I want the cult ring or the north facing moth? Or snacks? Oh, you know, I don't know enough about What? I was like, I don't know enough about this, uh, how this game runs to understand the guide yet. So I'm going to go guideless for this first run. Okay, snacks or the cult ring? Snacks or the cult ring? Quick. Mushrooms. Uh, sorry, marshmallows. That's what I meant to say. Marshmallows. Oh, there was a just pack mar random button too. Oh, well, oh, oh well. One might say the monster prom had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love, we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. Oh, I'm loving this already! Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just two weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were going to ask on a meteor sh we were we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. <gasps> Joy Johnson Jojima. JJJ. Joy Johnson Jojima, 23, a badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. <gasps> Do you want to take that? That's the hunter! Do you want to take the hunter? Yeah. Aravi Mishra, 22, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Do you South want to Lester Hewlett Packard, version 1.1. A library computer who had become a sentient robot, ready to experience life to its fullest. Dalia Kino, 20. A buff blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Oh no, it's D and Damien. Damien LeVay. Do you want me to take it back over since you'll be doing Dahlia? I think I can do it. Okay, try it. Damien LeVay. 21. A fearless demon with a test for destruction and a love of fire. Uh, do you mind if I take Milo? Go for it, please. And Milo Belladonna, 23. A death reaper doubling as an internet influencer and who is profoundly in love with life and all its earthly pleasures. Oh, baby. The bus trip is long, and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. <coughs> and so it was clear. It all came down to breaking the ice and ca causing a good impression with the right person. <gasps> Break the ice by doing something unexpected on the bus! Oh my goodness. Ah! <laughs> Just press the <laughs> skip button until this shit starts. Oh my gosh! I don't even know what the skills are yet. I mean, they're probably the same, right? Um, they have the same icons. So. Uh, let's uh, perform a magic trick, I guess. I want the bus to be happy. Oh, apparently that was the joy option. Oh, are you into magic, Finger? I never pegged you for a powerful mage. Oh, that makes so much sense in retrospect. Oh, they were the, for the characters. Oh, I wanted to I wanted to do Milo. I should have played dead. Oh, well, that's fine. You aren't. You just made a quarter disappear behind your ear, but powerful mage Pengu does have a nice ring to it. I know we're on vacation right now, but I can't relax forever. I'm hoping to elevate my magical prowess while we're at camp. I'm going to be working on teleportation spells and elemental magic. What are you looking to improve over the summer? Honestly, you'll be lucky if you can pull a rabbit out of a hat by next fall, but you're way more interested in maybe dating Joy before this is all over? And you ended up with Calculester. Okay. Oh, Puga, you are so compassionate to the bug. 
it warms my spirit to see an organic being care so deeply about its mechanical helpers. But what do you think will make Sebus happy? Perhaps a delicious helping of fresh oil? Or a new paint job to make it feel more confident in its appearance? Or perhaps the bus will be happiest if the passengers inside it are happier. Yes, that is most logical. I operate most optimally when the hamster in my chassis that runs on the wheel which powers my body is in good spirits. The what now? There's a hamster in that there hills! Okay then! Come, Puka, let us make ourselves happy so that the bus may be happy. Do you want to stream a movie for the rest of the ride? Aww. Sure. We only had two weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start! Ding, All right. ding. Let's see what the heck is going on here! Alright, so this makes sense. Lipto, Manor, Scout HQ! Alright, so it'll probably... I mean... I remember there was a way to see before, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, here. Okay, so it looks like... Okay, so that's Woods, that's Lake, that's Camp Dome, that's Manor, and that's Scout HQ. Okay, so... It looks like Woods is Smarts, uh, Lake is Fun, uh, the arena type thing is Charm, the mansion is Boldness, and the Scout thingy is... Uh, wait, which one is that? Creativity, I think. Oh yeah, yeah no money. Um, yeah, no, who needs money? We're at camp. <laughs> no. Alright, so... Hmm, if, do I actually want to go for Joy? I, I really kind of wanted to go to Milo, for Milo, but I don't know how to do that. So, let's see. Um, I assume he likes... I'd imagine charm and fun. Yeah. So I'm gonna be fun, if that's alright. That's fine. I'm probably gonna go in the woods. Because we... Oh yay, we get all the new photos! That day yes. you go diving to see what's at the bottom of the lake. You find a comic book. You pick it up, but it's so interesting you stay there reading it. This is bad because you cannot hold your breath indefinitely. You rush to the surface, but before getting there you drown a little and some lake water gets into your mouth. Gross! <laughs> you swallow some weird stuff that was in the lake water, like a whole jellyfish and too fun? What was that doing there? <laughs> You spend some time chilling at the lake with Joy. She's cast a waterproof spell on her book, Erotic Photography for Classy Witches, and you're trying not to drown. Hold up. Do you smell beef and a faint whiff of freshly sucked blood? Oh, goddess, no. <gasps> There's a new character. Do you want to do the Minotaur so I can do the Yes. All right. Massive Minotaur Cannonball! Yeah! And Elegant Vampiric Cannonball! Zippity Doo Da! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's Camp Rival Camp's two most notorious Camp Rival Camp, oh my gosh. Two most notorious campers Dimitri, the mysterious vampire, and Morty, the hypersexualized Minotaur. I already don't like him. But I love Dimitri. He's funny. You know, maybe I will go for Joy, just so I can see more Dimitri. Ugh, what are you two doing here? Can't you just let me read in peace for once? Although, I will admit that wet and dripping with not super clean lake water is a good look for you two. Listen here, witch. There is not enough lake in this lake for everyone. There's barely enough room in here for my bulging calf muscles. Do you see what this minotaur is wearing? I need you to notice the cow joke. Calf muscles. I, mm, yep, 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 yep. You right? sure are right. right. Oh my goodness. He's up. He's puns and terrible. And like... Indeed. So we're staging a takeover in the name of the glorious camp rival camp. Be gone, peasantry! Hey, Artemisia, thank you for the hot Hi! Hi! We're playing That's camp really now! Fun. We're so excited! It's our, for both of us, this is our very first time seeing any of this, so new characters are totally new to us, including this wacky minotaur dude. He is super All wacky. Right. Oh my goodness. Psh, 
I just leveled up my necromancy skill, and there are a ton of dead fish in this lake. You don't want to fuck with me, I assure you. Ha! I thought you might try to resist, dearest rival. But sadly for you, we have an irresistible, I mean, unbeatable technique. No, Morty! What? Sexy man, fusion technique, activate! What? Dimitri grabs Morty's horns and awkwardly climbs onto his bulging CrossFit Instagram model's shoulders. Wow! <laughs> By order of Camp Rival Camp's counselors, to ensure that we're having the most summer fun possible, any fight in the lake must be a chicken fight! Goddess, I hate these constant shenanigans. All right, Pengu, you heard them. Let's get these idiots to go away and let me read in peace. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Assuming my character is allosexual, you're not about to pass up an opportunity to get between Joy's legs, so you agree and hoist her onto your shoulders. I mean, even if you're not allosexual and you just like cuddle, like that's I mean, that's true. Contact. That's true. That's true. Five pillows are a thing for a reason. Yeah, nah, I mean, I do that not means... think I'd have the upper body strength for it, but, like, to carry anyone, I don't think I could carry, like, the smallest of the characters because I have zero upper body strength, but... That's fine. That's I like to doing. imagine my character has plenty of upper body strength and can okay. totally, like, carry Joy on her, her skinny Franken shoulders. Oh, yeah. Defeat Morty and Dimitri, save Joy's chill afternoon, and have some fun while you're at it, because hey, this is a video game and fun is the whole point. Okay, um, let me see. I feel like convincing them might require smarts or creativity, and I'm not great at either of those. Um, I and I don't feel like blowing bubbles to make it look like Morty farted it requires... Creativity? It's probably fun or boldness. Yeah. So, I'm gonna go with blow bubbles to make it look like Morty farted. <laughs> yes, good, that was fun. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, yeah. That's an amazing idea. Juvenile, but amazing. Do it. You immediately dive underwater and begin blowing bubbles near Morty's juicy tushy. <laughs> hey, look, everybody! Morty's farting! No! I didn't fart! Why is everybody laughing at me? I didn't fart, you guys! Oh my god! The leg! The, the perfect point toe. Morty, stop farting! I know you have a sensitive stomach, but it's super uncool! Dimitri, I'm not <laughs> farting! I swear on my great great grandmole! <laughs> Everyone in Morty's positions is hilarious! You all know that I have super strong buttons, so I can hold in my part. I do it all the time. You blow bubbles even harder. Thank God you've been working on your lung capacity. <laughs> you are farting. Look at those bubbles. Those are fart bubbles. Morty fart bubbles. No, stop it. I'm not farting. Artemisia, I can and accept it. I love it. I like it. It honestly is it. Come on, Morty, let's get out of here. You're hurting our bad boy reputation more with every fart. Heck, you're right. We've got to get back to camp, rival camp. I keep my emergency supply of activia under our bunk bed. That is Amazing. a good way to keep yourself bacterial overgrowth. That stuff needs to be refrigerated. Oh dear. That was incredibly stupid, and incredibly effective. Got any other stupid but effective moves, Pingu? I would bet that you do. You and Joy get some quality time alone by the lake, during which you gain two charm and one smarts. Aw, yeah. Alright, where do you want to go, Puka? Into the woods we go again, we have to. <laughs> oh my gosh, I literally saw that live, like, a couple days ago. I know, I'm envious, but it's all good. That day, you go on a hiking trip with a bunch of random campers. You live some weird adventures and share personal stories and secrets. 
You don't know their names, and they don't seem to have their own character models, but they reveal to you that they're part of a different game, the survival resource managing one. That sounds rough for them. It turns out they cannot perceive your character model. You go to the same camp, yet you're part of different games. Wow. It's deeply strange and makes you reflect so much about your own existence, you gain plus two smarts out of it. Amazing. Also, I they love- They have the game plus ten berries and plus ten two stamina, whatever that means. <laughs> I, did I just go into the woods with a bunch of don't starve characters? I think you did! I'm one of also, the I love your guys' cute little guys. I'm one of the nameless shadows that shows up all the time. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. it. That's the... Okay. You take a break from tomfoolery to spend a few quiet moments with Kathy Lester, romantically perusing some spreadsheets. And this friend, Fuga, is an index of every plant I have cared for during my short lifetime. Look. Here is Buckaroo Bonsai, there is Robert Plantinson, and here is the entry for Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, oh dear. According to this spreadsheet, I have severely neglected poor Jennifer. Her feeding, watering, and sunlight are all within unacceptable range, but look here. Calculester directs your attention to a column labeled Emotional Development. Did you know, by the way, they recently recorded and plants really do like make like react to certain things. Like there are noises they make when they're starting to get dehydrated huh. or like damaged. It's fascinating. Wow. 13.5. Statistically, that is the most immature number. I must find time to take her into the woods to be mentored by an older, wiser plant. Perhaps a Dutch elm. What? What is this? I love him. Well, good, because you're him. Better oh make goodness. that trip soon, naive summer camper, because the woods won't be here for very much longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Indeed, all organic life is fleeting, but I do not think it calls for laughter. But if I didn't laugh, how would you know I was an evil CEO? Hmm, perhaps I should introduce myself. Mr. Pappas is the name, and turning beloved summer camps into shopping malls is my game. <laughs> A game which I intend to play here, at Camp Spooky, by buying it and turning it into a shopping mall. I do not understand. What leads you to believe that this is a good location for a shopping mall? What are your site selection criteria? That's easy. When deciding where to build a shopping mall, I always consider three things. Acreage, local infrastructure, and how many hundreds of youths it will upset! <laughs> As the saying goes, you can't build a shopping mall without upsetting a few youths. But I didn't get where I am today by settling for just a few. Oh dear. According to the specified criteria, Camp Spooky is indeed the ideal location for a shopping mall. <laughs> I do not it. support the wholesale destruction of this camp and its environs, but I feel compelled to bow to superior logic. What can I do? Oh no! If Camp Spooky is replaced with a shopping mall, where are you gonna map? The food court? Gross! Amazing. There's only one way out. You've gotta suggest a shopping mall location that would upset even more youth than building it here! Alright. Build a shopping <laughs> mall for Plant Night! Oh my god! I honestly have no idea which one is what because. Um... All my stats are within like a couple points of each other yeah just pick to which honest, one speaks to your soul according to all of pop culture the best place to build a shopping mall is 19 is the 1980s yeah according to all of pop culture the best place to build a shopping mall is the 1980s The 80s? Interesting. That's just the sort of outside the space-time continuum thinking we need in this business. 
my hair bros. Patrick, run the numbers on building a shopping mall in the 80s. No, don't tell me that's impossible. I own the trademark on impossible. <laughs> hmm, the numbers bear out your suggestion, Puka. Looks like we'll be starting construction in negative 40 years. Uh, Simon Malls are my fault. <laughs> but friend, Mr. Papa, it's time to have a sea double. I seem to recall it violating the principles of causality and conservation of energy. Anything is feasible if you're rich enough. The government started selling temporal offsets years ago. I'll just buy a few and head back to the 80s. Before you can say anything, Papas and his intern have vanished the <laughs> top of commerce. You've successfully removed him not only from here, but from now. <laughs> I, I... Wow. I slightly regret that because he was hilarious, but you know. Okay. You appear to have saved camp, friend Puka, and yet an important question remains. Will setting loose an exploitative CEO several decades in the past have any deleterious effect on the timeline? Ah, uh, no, I'm sure it's fine. You were sure, Calculuster, that any damage Pappas might do in the past has already been done. That's why we live in a soft dystopic oligarchy where the super rich sacrifice the health and livelihood of workers for short term gain. Yeah. That just got too real. Too real, but accurate. Right? Oh, that's a relief. It sure is. Now that Papas is gone, you're free to go about your usual daily routine of worrying about climate change when... I'm back! Boy, time travel is invigorating! I went back to the 80s, but it turns out building a shopping mall on the remains of my parents' demolished high school made it unlikely that I would ever be born. <laughs> In the process of convincing them to have sex after all, I invented a popular dance move that made me millions! And realized the immense money-making potential of time travel! What? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to build shopping malls over the high schools of all my business rivals! I'm going to be so wealthy! <laughs> finally discovered the reason for the current education crisis. That's a load of my processors. <laughs> well. Um, yeah, who needs high school? It's just as easy to get laid at summer camp anyway. You gain two charm and one boldness. Well. <laughs> Oh, oh, you don't get to choose random. I mean, let's not spend too much time on this, but everybody choose a song, say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Just the first thing that comes to your head, and I have got Let It Go from Frozen. Into the light. I think you win. All right. <laughs> Into the Woods definitely has more survival tip possibilities than Let It Go. All right, um, which one's fun again? That one's fun. Uh, fun is the lake. What do I need? What do I need for calculus or in base game? Um, it's creativity and no, it's smarts and either creativity or charm, but I don't remember which. But let me see if I can, uh, uh, da -da -da. all outcomes guide. That's not what I want yet. Mm. Monster camp events are not inside. Campfire events. Interesting. Oh, because instead of a lunch table, we'll have campfire. Oh, that's fun. Uh, is there really just. Monster camp events and outcomes. Does this have a what I need? I can just wing it. I'm certain I need more smarts than I have. Uh, yeah, smarts and fun. Oh, my fun is super low, though. Alright. Is it okay if I go to the the water? 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, since I'm not going for Milo anymore, I'm, I'm going for Joy, so... While looking around the lake for a private pit place to take a pee, you find a treasure map buried in the sand. It leads to an X in the center of the lake. You gather a crew of trusted friends, don your eye patch, and sail out there to find the booty. When you arrive, you find a tiny island and a single palm tree. You dig up a box that says, open in case of a very boring day. <laughs> you open the box and find, plus two fun! Arr! You spot calculus are tending to an ant farm. He's so cute when he's manipulating the lives of thousands of organic life forms. Hey, dude. I got the ending where Calculester made, like, a virtual universe. Remember that? Yes, I do. That was amazingly strange. Hello, friend Fuga. Perhaps your visit will bring joy to my aunt. Hmm. No. I don't understand. Organic beings are supposed to love social contact, but these ants seem quite anti-social. I even tried introducing them to hogging, but it mostly just killed them. Oh no. Perhaps we can sing them some songs about friendship? I believe it is easier to learn lessons through songs. Dramatic entrance! <laughs> that was my dramatic entrance! Are you impressed? It was certainly dramatic. <laughs> Thank you! Oh, I've been practicing. Anyway, are you ready for our ant battle? I do not recall agreeing to such a thing. Really? I could have sworn I was staring intensely at you earlier while my internal monologue insisted that my ants must defeat your ants. You stared back with such an unblinking intensity that I knew you must <laughs> be thinking the same thing. Oh dear. Then, Dahlia, I never blink. It is because I do not have eyes. Oh dear. Then it's settled! Our ants will engage in glorious combat! Watch out though! I've been training my ants tirelessly to defeat yours! Oh look, dear. Look how both they've become! Dahlia unveils her ant farm. It's full of Asian longhorn beetles. Train That's... hard, Calculester! Next time we meet, I won't go easy on you! Oh dear, I never agreed to this fight, and my aunts are severely outmatched. Yet somehow, I feel duty bound to participate in this contest. Oh no. Please, Puka, help me find a way to save my aunts from certain death at the hands of Dahlia's people. Alright, uh, Space Race feels like smarts, probably. Uh, diplomatic skills probably would be charm or creativity. Okay, so... but causing the insects to gang up on Dahlia sounds hilarious. Fair! And I think that that's the one you have the better chance of succeeding at. Yeah. You yep. can do this! You once did diplomacy with some spiders in high school. Ants and beetles are nothing. He managed to distract Dahlia by telling her there's a tree in the forest she hasn't punched yet, and are soon face to face with the beetle's president. Amazing. You tell him the same thing you told the ant's queen. The real enemy isn't other insects. It's the cruel dictator who's forcing them to fight their formic brethren. You're not sure whether you've gotten through to them, because beetles can't speak or understand language, but a few days later it's time to put your diplomacy to the test. All right, you scrubs. It's time for us to see who the real ants are. If that's all you wanted to figure out, the answer is clearly my ants, because your ants are beetles. <laughs> Your propaganda has no effect on me, Calculator. How about you? Wait, what's happening? The ants aren't fighting each other. They're fighting me! Sure enough, both <laughs> Calculator's ants and Dahlia's beetles have spilled out of the terrarium and are crawling all over Dahlia. Amazing. Oh, Puka, you tricked me. I should have trained my ants not to betray me. No, I can't be. How could I allow myself to be bested this way? I must fight on. I must... Prevail! Friend, Dahlia, it is only some insects crawling on your body. Perhaps you are so weak that even some puny insects can defeat me! Indeed, I'm ashamed, but you're not wrong. I must train harder than ever before. So long, ants! Dahlia flees the battlefield, shaking off most of Calculus's hands in the process. She gathers them all up and returns them to their home. 
you had a stressful day, so you let them ruin a picnic you were planning to have with Cal. Nice. Aww. You two one and one charm. Wow. Okay, that was adorable. All right, so I think for Joy, I need more smarts, so I'm going to hang out at the woods for a bit. Oh, that's so cute! I just, sorry, I'm just really enjoying all of your photos. Today, you decide to hike all the way across the woods. You want to see what's on the other side. It's a long, treacherous hike that ends up taking only an hour. I guess these woods aren't that big after all. How do you and your friends get lost in them so often? Anyway, turns out there's a library on the other side of the woods. You go in and read some books or something and gain two smarts. <laughs> nice. After that, you leave because you agreed to join Joy and Scott for their latest photography class shoot, thinking maybe this time there will be some uh, exciting visuals. No such luck. Unless... Joy, look! That pink fleshy giant is in another one of my photographs! I think it's following me! <laughs> maybe you should try taking your finger off the lens. Oh, wow! Thanks for the tip, Joy. Maybe if I remove my finger, I'll get an even better view of the creature. <laughs> you do that, buddy. My goddess, Pengu, thanks for coming along. I love Scott, and this class has been good for him, but sometimes it's like taking photos with a pile of bricks. Joy, Joy, look! I found a bush! What? What? <gasps> Wow, you found a bush in nature? That's incredible! Wait, that's not a bush. No, trust me, I'm an expert. Oh boy, I'm so excited! I've been holding oh my no. pee all day! Oh no. Do you want to be this guy? Yeah. Well, you'll have to hold it a little longer. The bush was me all along. Council of Flaws, Master of Disguise, strikes again. Whoa! I totally thought you were a bush, bro! You even smell like leaves and dog urine, just like a real bush! Did you actually paint yourself green? You're a chameleon, you can change the color of your skin! That would be cheating, Joy! This is a camouflage, and you still have a lot to learn! You should come to more of my camouflage classes! Hmm, pass. I can use magic anyway. You're lost. You're missing on the most popular class in all of Camp Spooky. Eh, I find that hard to believe. Who's into camouflage these days? Everyone I know is more into being very loud and visible. And annoying, if I must say. What? People not into camouflage these days? Well, 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 if that's true. How come five campers came to me the other day to learn how to camouflage themselves to sneak into the camp showers? Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. W what? Please tell me you didn't teach five campers how to hide undetectably in the bathrooms! Of course I did. I'm a great counselor and a master of disguise. I wouldn't let down some fellow camouflage enthusiasts. But you did... To realize it was totally for perverted sex reasons, right? Yeah. Oh, um. You're right, Joy. Now that I think about it, it's quite clear they wanted to camouflage for perverted reasons. I was so enamored with the fine art of camouflage, I forgot it could be used for evil. Oh, buddy. God dang it, Flodge. Come on, Pingu, we've got to find a way to flush them out. This is an emergency. Hmm. Out disguise them, maybe smart? Scare them off by recruiting their pa What? Ah! <laughs> Terrible. I think my pet ball, but I'm sorry. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can't uh, <laughs> find this. Let's see. I found a partial thing. So let's see. Joy and... Scott's not a love interest in this, right? I don't know. He wasn't listed. Side characters. Mm, Scott. Nope. Wrong one. Scott and Polly. Fatness. LMA. Coach. Gerard. I wonder who Gerard is. Scott and Flodge. Okay. Out disguise them as creativity and scare them as fun. 
I am equal. I don't like the other one, so I'll try this one. Oh, curses. Oh, no. Are you sure that's a good idea? It seems like not a good idea. Nonsense. It's a brilliant plan, and the old saying goes back to skies with disguise. Pretty sure it's fight fire with fire. Common misconception. It's actually fight fire with disguise. The word fire was actually disguised in disguise. I don't know about that. You just said it was... You know what? Never mind. Time is short, and I don't have a better idea. Let's do it your way, Pengu. Way ahead of her. You leap into action, calling up a dozen actors, the set designer, and the special effects team you keep on retainer. <laughs> Wait, actually, couldn't we just use these 70 people you just summoned to search the bathrooms? They're not that big. They are now! You've already had the sex set sorry. You've already had the set design team knock down some walls and expand the bathrooms in order to fit all the lighting and camera equipment. Camera equipment? You're putting cameras in the bathroom! Duh! How else are you going to get the horrified reaction shots of the bathroom perverts realizing they're adrift in space-time? Hang on, do you actually care about stopping these perverts? Or is this just an excuse to film the no-nudity alternate reality sci-fi epic you're always talking about? Oh. Can't it be both? Seriously? I've slain demons less monomaniacal than you. I've got half a mind to slay you too, but you're not worth the mana. I'm going to go find another way to fix this. Aww. Joy turns and stomps off. You try to follow her, but the catering team has just arrived, and these actors need to eat. You lose two fun and one creativity, and when your film comes out, you also lose 1,000 artistic credibility. Ah, oh, bummer. Sorry. Alright, uh... Rimuru! Pikachu! I don't freaking know. Absolutely, Rimuru, you win. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I think you have to click. Oh, oh, I have to click. Sorry, I was the first. Yep, that makes sense. Oh, campfire time! All right, maybe I can. If if you're gonna sit there, yeah, yeah, this should be fine. I'll be able to sit with the Joy, and you'll person. be able to sit with. Do you? No, it's fine. So in the all I know in Road Trip is one of the DLCs which I'm probably going to eventually buy lets you be a moth person who is like written as ace. Oh yay! I I want that character too then. Right? I was like that you sounds just delicious. Quarterly review it went awesome. Your boss thinks you're doing a great job playing this video game. What? You're hoping to celebrate your corporate competency with some pals and good news. You find out Avi and Calculus are by the campfire. In, con in conclusion, those are the 18,208 reasons I have collected to convince you that we should paint our food truck the statistically best color. Burnt orange. This is so fun. Sounds glorious, Cal. God, this food truck is gonna be so sick! I'm gonna reach level 18 in my merchant skill tree so fast! I love her. Oh, can I do the creepy thing? Yes, please. Guys, I just had the trillest food truck idea. We should sell mini Victoria sponge cakes for dessert. They were the technical challenge recipe for the Gibbo season, the OGBBO season five finale. So dope. I'm not set on that voice. I might experiment with it. I, it was pretty fun. Whoa, X watches the Great British Bake Off. That's your favorite show. You give them the secret GBBO handshake that all true cake heads know. I want to know the secret handshake! <laughs> nice! It's sick that you like GBBO, Puka. I honestly love reality TV in general. I'm watching the best thing right now. Have you guys seen 90 Day Adoption? I have not seen it. I am aware that the show exists, but have been unable to watch it due to my current parental control browser settings. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Reality TV bores the heck out of me. They always edit out the really good violence. Holy shit, you guys aren't watching 90 Day Adoption? It's the ultimate reality show, and now I'm going to tell you all everything about it, and you can't stop me! 
So basically, the show is like The Bachelor, but for orphans. So each season, there's a new set of parents, and they adopt six orphans and choose which one they want to keep. Oh, that's horrifying. Oh my god. But the crazy part is, the parents have never met each other face to face. They fell in love and got married while only communicating through walkie-talkies. And if the parents don't complete enough intimacy challenges, they have to let their exes raise the children for a day. Needless to say, the drama is absolutely the best part. Mm, I am pleased that you are enjoying the show, but I am afraid I may be unable to watch it. I can only process a limited amount of drama per hour. I thought I was safe watching my favorite reality show, Sarah's House, but then I had to process all the emotional nuance in the meat incident. I almost ran out of battery. Yeah, these shows are never worth the time to watch them. It's always like one five minute clip of a headbutt that they just replay over and over. Do you like the voice I've been doing so far for Hex, or...? I do. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll try. I'll, I'll stick with it. It's a little similar to what I'm doing for Poppus, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Alright. Okay, you guys. I hear you. And I get this show isn't for everyone, but I haven't even told you about the elimination challenges yet. Just wait till you hear this. Oh, dear. This is stressful. I may be overheating. Is my fan whirring louder than normal? Uh-oh. Looks like your two vulnerable friends aren't totally obsessed with reality TV. That's a deal breaker for you. Quick, bring up a show you know they'll love. What? Um, uh, Calculusters doesn't have as many details. I, but... it's, it's obvious which one is Calculuster. I'm sorry. Oh, have you oh, guys seen a... the Turing test? Are you human enough? It's family friendly, drama free, and teaches you a lot about human social cues. Aww. I didn't realize it was a either or choice, but that's sweet, yeah. Like. Oh wow, that show sounds like it would align with my personal interests and allow me to bond with all of you, thereby incrementally strengthening our friendship. Personally, I would be very interested in consuming an episode as soon as possible. Thanks for the suggestion, Puka. OMG, Cal! It's so good and you would love it! Honestly, it's so crazy you haven't seen it yet because it's, like, made for you! Let's watch it! You whip out your phone, briefly thank God that you kept your Disney Plus subscription, and pull up an episode of the Turing Test. Welcome to another episode of the Turing Test! Our first contestant today is going to try to prove his humanity by eating organic material! Uh-oh. Looks like JudgeBot342 isn't very impressed by our first contestant's technique. He's forgetting a major element of human eating. Swallowing. Whoa, so the robots in the show are trying to pass as people? Then why are the judges robots? Shouldn't the judges be human? Shut up, r &E. Obviously not! The judges have to be robots! Humans are too subjective and emotionally biased to judge things. Duh. Our next contestant... Pleasure Droid 0001231 is trying to wow the judges with their human behavior being toxic on Twitter. Looks like they're trashing a TV show they didn't watch. What an edgy performance. Pleasure Droid 0001231 sure isn't pulling any punches. I am personally riveted by this video content. And now, our final contestant is going to prove his humanity with the most difficult, ambitious challenge we've ever seen. Demonstrating appropriate facial cues in conversation! Dang! I have trouble with that one. What? <laughs> right? I am completely surprised by this. He's a dark horse of the season, but it looks like he's pulling it off. His eyebrows might be overheating and... Oh my god, it's a perfect 10 performance! Wow. Did you notice how that robot looked sadly uncomfortable when discussing his salary? That was so human. How inspirational. Yep, that show was pretty funny, but I gotta take off. I scheduled a 12 hour water dungeon speedrun for tonight. I'm gonna crush the record by at least 0.12 seconds. 
No, Harvey! You don't understand, it only gets better in season two! They make the judges wear wigs! Don't drag me away! <laughs> I need water. One sec, let me, let me finish this. I I'm gonna run to the bathroom. Well, so. if they're no longer interested, perhaps you and I could consume more of this content together. Just the two of us. Hell yeah! After a few more episodes, Calculuster asks if you'd be more comfortable if you put a cold robotic arm around you. You don't know if Cal has perfected his human cues, but his facial expression when he's asking seems a bit flirty. Ooh! Alright, so I'm gonna- I'm also gonna BRB. Alright, now I'm gonna see if I can't figure out what went wrong by plugging my headphones back in and hoping to the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that looks promising. Okay! Seems my desktop audio is back in order. I don't know what happened. Probably I clicked a button. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit with Joy and Dahlia. You sit down between a classic Dahlia x Joy exchange. Dahlia is being very intense and excited, and Joy looks like she'd walk over a bed of hot coals if it would shut her off. Oh my gosh. Come on, Joy! I'd be a great addition to the coven! I've already memorized all your moves, your favorite catchphrases. I even bought the limited edition Kawaii third hot popcorn case off eBay. What more do I need to do? Uh, how about be a witch? <laughs> or having even the slightest bit of foresight and subtlety to your plans? I can be subtle. Look at me, I'm being subtle right now. Watchers are inconspicuously nudgy towards inviting me into the coven. Uh, uh-huh. Dahlia. No, please let me into the coven, I want this so badly! We don't need a fourth member. Three is the number of the triple goddess, which is not a force that can be broken. Also, we ha only have three main character slots available. If we open a fourth, the network will be forced to establish a union. I'm sure there's something I could do. Maybe I could be your buddy double for the really intense fight scenes. I mean, we're basically twins already. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hidden, hidden Dahlia cinnamon roll moment. I'm, I'm delighted. Silence. No. Oh, come on! Look, I already have a joy wig that I can wear. Please show it to us. Please. Is that real hair? Hell yeah! I've been collecting it slowly while you slept, and I'm prepared for this exact situation, which should show you just how committed I am to the coven. No, Dahlia, honey, no. <laughs> Demons do not get. Joy looks halfway between exasperated and disturbed. But God, Dahlia's just so cute when she's irresponsibly passionate about something. <laughs> you know she's not going to drop this until she gets a satisfactory answer, but which of them do you want your answer to appeal to the most? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure go to sleep and we... I, these are both good answers, though. Coven's last season was too grim. This season we need... Uh, you can be the irresistible blue seductress who distracts the villains. That's I mean, you know, it, it, would let, it would let them throw her at Dimitri and distract him and Joy. Like, I mean, there I'm would be sure advantages to... Go both, you know, both of these kind of make them both happy, but obviously one more than the other. So, yeah. that said, since I'm attempting to romance Joy... You can be a coven sleeper agent! So, go to sleep, and we will let you know when you're needed. Wait, how does this sleeping help the coven with an intense battle sequence? Or a tender, emotional conversation that builds character relationships and raises the stakes for the overall season art? No, no, trust me. Pingu is, like, so right about this. The role of coven sleeper agent is very serious and definitely total essen totally essential to our cause. Oh, well, in that case, keep me in! I'll sleep like no man, woman, or non-binary badass has slept before! F yeah! 
Die. Yeah, cool. You do that. Okay, now let's talk strategy. Should I go silent mode or full on snore? Do you have any advice on the best pose to maximize the results? Blankets or no blankets? Or should I sleep with one foot outside of the blankets in case I get too hot? Um, you do whatever you think is best. I trust you. As long as you can start, like, right away. Of course. Anything for my fearless leader. I'll go back to my tent and start now. Phew. Thanks, Pengu. You're a lifesaver. You know, the coven itself may not necessarily need a new member, but I could always use someone to help me beat off rabbit fangirls. But, you know, only if that interests you. Hell yeah, it does! You enjoy some amazing alone time with Joy, discussing your favorite coven episodes and the best strategies on how to keep annoying fans at bay. It's so romantic. I... Okay, two things. One, I really, 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 really want to know if there is Dahlia and Coven content in the base game that we have not yet encountered. Might well and be! Two, two... Shit, I just forgot what the other one was. Oh no. Our I want to know what the hell this, this flask thing is. Yeah. I I'll guess we gotta a take a gamble. But it's yep. your turn, it looks like. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. It's one! You new here? Don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I will prepare you a drink. The drink of the day. You may choose to drink that one. But if you're not interested, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with a second option. It can be better, it can be worse. But one thing is for sure, it will be mysterious. This is precious. And these drinks. Look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in trading. For you to test my concoctions is somewhere between kind and reckless. So get ready and good luck. No idea if I got the recipe right. Wanna try it? I have no idea what this is or what this means. Otherwise, you always have the mystery box. Alright. Whiskey or the box? The box! That's up to you. I think I'm gonna do the box because I'm terrible at Ding Dong and I'm delighted by this entire mess. Sure. I know what whiskey does, I think. It's what, is, what do you suppose it does? I, I assume it gets you drunk. I or well, cold. I mean, I was gonna assume that these are all skill boosts, or Maybe. or negatives. The box. The box. Guess we'll find out. Margarita. Ah, Margarita. The mystery box. So bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer the mystery box? I'm not sure if I'm vibing with AB blood. I don't actually know what we do, so... I'll also take the box! <gasps> it's pixelated! <laughs> I'm delighted. Hope you're happy with it. No refund! Margarita. Which also looks like a brain. So you want to drink a margarita, huh? You think that by drinking a brain you'll absorb it? Smart. A bit consistent. But hey, it's what actually happens. Occam's razor at its finest. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, so I was right. It is a boost. Alright. Alright, let's see what this does. Probably fun? Ah! A bang on the beach. I mean, that's a legitimate drink name. I don't mind that. It is, but I don't feel like saying it. That's fair. I brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try. I assure you, it'll be a fun ride. Oh, good. You need fun. Yeah. Whoa. That was that was a lot of fun. Holy cow. Still hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. I love the weird little cat. 
that's that, that's one the magical Latino cat. Are are you sure? Is it really? I am, because someone in one of the reviews for Road Trip DLC commented that what that about the devs talking about Juan's journey from off-screen but repeat character in the first game to on-screen NPC in the second game to third game romanceable. Oh, fair. <laughs> Slash playable. All right. I'm going to say Rise of the Guardians. Uh, Palm Poco. Rise of the Guardians. That yeah. Is, like, effect. Yeah, Tom Poco that's... is dancing around doing nonsense. Alright, I think I just need to be smarter. Alright, that day you go searching the woods for edible wildflowers to make a delicious wildflower soup. You heard that some well-known flowers like lilies and tulips are actually poisonous. You decide to find out which flowers are bad by eating them all! A few hours later, you vomited up all the contents of your stomach and have a comprehensive list of which flowers to not put in the soup next time. Nice! You gained two smarts. <laughs> Wildflower soup forever! <laughs> what? You're wandering aimlessly around the camp looking for Joy for a very important reason, completely unrelated to wanting to smooch her cute face, when suddenly... Pengu, there you are! I've been wandering around camp looking for you for a very important reason! Oh, you know what that means! The world is going to end! Oh, huh. Guess you didn't know what that meant. There's an asteroid headed right for us, and if we don't complete this incredibly complex and epic ritual to alter its path, this could be the end for the whole planet! You dive in to help. Things start well. You burn a pentagram into the ground, find and place the ten turtle guardians, and hang strands of garlic from every third sycamore tree. By the time you reach the step where you have to get the entire camp to run around in circles shrieking and wailing, which they do with great enthusiasm. It seems that, like, nothing can get in your way. What? <laughs> do you want to be super strict looking counselor lady who may or may not be Principal Giant Spider? Sure. What is all this? Unsanctioned running and screaming. There is a strict sanctioned running and screaming only policy at Camp Spooky. Stop these shenanigans at once. Oh, okay, Camp Director Miss Weaving. She totally, hopefully, hangs out with Principal Giant Spider. Or their siblings. Yes. But Camp Sorry. Director Miss Weaving, we're performing a magic ritual to save the world from. If you wanted to do magic to save the world, you should have done that earlier in the day when I gave everyone a do magic to save the world break. But I didn't need to do magic to save the world then. I need to do magic to save the world now. Young lady. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sick and tired of your generation using magic to solve all your problems. In fact, I'm going to confiscate your magic so you learn how to cope without it. Oh no! That's ridiculous! Magic isn't a thing you can just- Wait, what the fuck? Where did my magic go? Why can't I feel my magic? Oh my goddess, she did it! Camp Director Miss Weaving took away my magic! Now how are we going to save the world from this asteroid? Psh! That's an easy one. You know all about stopping asteroids without e using magic. All you have to do is... Uh... Let's see... I have this... Let's see... Joy and side characters. <laughs> Camp Counselor Miss Weaving. Yeah, here we go. Uh, betray, smart, and treat is fun. Oh no! They're equal again! Which was I- which did I raise more recently? Smarts. I don't know if that has any relevance, but... Betray your usually inclusive nature by passing strict legislature forbidding the immigration of asteroids to Earth. Oof. On the one hand, I hate that kind of narrow, Earth-first thinking. But on the other hand, in this case, we do actually need to save the Earth. 
<laughs> Fine, let's do it. You use the universal language of politics, lying, to rush your legislature through the, through the process as quickly as possible until it's brought onto the floor for debate. You passionately explain that scientists all agree that the meteor is coming for Earth, coming to Earth, and that this is a catastrophic event that could destroy the planet. You speak of mass extinction, extreme weather events that could kill thousands, new diseases caused by changes in weather melting the permafrost, a collapse in food production. But no one seems particularly moved by this. Instead, you make up a bunch of bullshit about how the asteroid is coming to Earth both to lazily soak up welfare and steal jobs from hardworking monsters. For good measure, you throw in some additional nonsense about the asteroid intending to do a to do crime in some sort of vague and generic way. Somehow the idea of an asteroid stealing jobs and doing crime is super convincing when the literal threat of extinction somehow was not. Your law is passed immediately! Ouch. Huh. This has been a truly weird and depressing journey through legislature. But on the upside, no way in hell is that asteroid going to be able to get its visa approved to visit Earth. Indeed, it does not, as the resulting law is completely indecipherable. <laughs> well, Miss Johnson Jojima, I'm impressed that you managed to harness the cruelty and paranoia of our legal system for good. You may have your magic back now. Oh, good. I hope you've learned a valuable lesson about the importance of having a backup plan in case your magic is ever unavailable to you. My magic was only unavailable because she took it. The only thing I learned today was how much I hate power tripping teachers. And how much I like you, Pengu. Whoa, that's a good lesson to be on the right side of. Nice, good stat boost. Yeah. Alright. I have a decent amount of smarts. I'm gonna assume I need some more fun. Which is good, because smarts are off limits. Into Sorry. the lake! We'll go scuba diving and find a treasure chest at the bottom of the lake. Pick the lock, which is quite impressive if you keep in mind that you're still underwater. Inside you find over 1,000 fun! Unfortunately, your wetsuit doesn't have pockets. You can only go back to shore with two fun. Can you go back? We should be in the best. They're having a rave right now. I can fish. <laughs> you find Calculus are installing some new solar panels on his back so he can sunbathe. Milo is doing their part for the environment. <gasps> They're non-binary. I love it. Yes. By decorating the panels with gold leaf. Oh, hello there, Puka. Squandering precious minutes of your life wandering by the lake? I am just in love with your joie de vivre. I, too, am happy to see you. You can tell because of the facial expression I am simulating. Say, Puka, care for a swim? Cal can't go because he would completely cease to function if he swam for even a moment, but I'm dying for a little pleasant midday wetness. Wait, friend Milo. Before engaging in any wetness-related activities, please check the warning flag on the lifeguard booth. Today it is... Turquoise? I love it! The color of magic, spirituality, and taking baths with your friends! No, 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 this is not right. This is not one of the standard lifeguard flags. Its meaning is ambiguous. A green flag means that it is okay to swim. A yellow flag means that you may swim, but you must be careful. And a red flag, of course, means that you should not attempt to date the lake. Oh, my goodness. We'll just see about that, you think to yourself. But I find this turquoise flag both mysterious and threatening. We must query the lifeguards to discover its meaning. What? Are they algae? I think I'm they're pretty algae. sure one is a gargoyle and one is a, a slime, news? maybe? A slime yeah. or a news. Okay, um, um which one do you want to voice? I'll voice the other. I no strong preference. All right, I could do my valley girl one for the tall one, so. All right. The lifeguards? Whoa, Wanda, I think that's us. 
Oh yeah, I was wondering why I had on this red swimsuit. I thought maybe I was an ambulance. Maybe you are. You can't let other people define you, dude. Ahem. I believe my friend wanted to ask you what that turquoise flag is supposed to mean. What do I look like? A flag professor? Professors don't wear swimsuits. It would be unprofessional. Hmm. I think it means everything's okay. Or else that a child's been kidnapped. Who decides what things mean, you know? You do. You're the lifeguards. <laughs> really? I could have sworn I was an ambulance. These two are more likely to turn into an actual ambulance and tell you anything useful about the flag. Luckily, you've already solved this mystery. What? Okay, let's see. I, let's wear turquoise. I'm gonna see if I can't find it. <laughs> oh no, it's not filled in. Calculester's guide is not as robust, at least of the ones I found. Let me go check other ones. Complete monster camp event and outcome. Spreadsheet? I found a spreadsheet. Oh yes. Can we add things to it? Can we help our society? Uh it looks like it might already be filled out. Oh, okay. Alright. This is sorted oddly. Okay, so you are interacting with let's see. Calculuster and Milo. Calculuster. Why can you not search within the document? Oh dear. All right. Uh, how how is how is this organized? This is lake. It has to be at the lake. So. Yep. It is organized. Okay. Calculuster, Milo, and lifeguards. Creativity. It's a warning. Smarts, so you don't run into it. I have way more smarts. Alas. Oh, oh, it's you. Oh, yeah! That's totally what it was for. I do not understand. Would not any color flag serve the same purpose? No way, Robo Dude. Different flags mean different things. Double red means no swimming. Turquoise means look out, flagpole. But if the flagpole is constantly occupied with the flagpole warning, how do you deliver other warnings? With the warning flagpole over there. Wanda points to another flagpole on the other side of the guardhouse. It's flying a chartreuse flag. That means the lake is relatively free of crab men today. But if that pole is for the actual warning flag, what is the purpose of this turquoise flag pole? <laughs> for holding the turquoise flag. Try to keep up, man. Could you not just remove the pole? <laughs> no way! Then where would we put the flag? You would not need the flag. So that's what we thought, too. But then we kept hitting our heads on the pole! Ah, such unadulterated stupidity! So few things in life are this pure! You two should be a protected species! We are protected by this flag! It keeps us from hitting our heads on this pole! Shine on, you idiot diamonds! Shine on! I'm going to hit the lake while there's still enough light to make us glisten. And I shall spend the next several hours struggling to parse the logic of the preceding conversation. It is one of my favorite pastimes. As for you, you do whichever thing gets you closer to the person you like, because you have no personality of your own. What you do have, though, is plus two creativity and plus one fun. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Uh, Envy, Team Calamity. Say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Um, uh, Raul Esparza. Ian McKellen? Sure. I don't know a lot of celebrities. I think you need to click. One day, the chosen celebrity knocks on your door and asks you to prepare soup for them. They do this every day. When asked why they do this, they just start screaming for an hour. This might sound absurd, but player orders is like... They would both be pretty weird! Let's just no, random. Just like random, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there's certain celebrities out there where you'd be like, yeah, no, I can see that. Right, and there's other majority where like, I can't see it at all, but like the ones we put, chose, I'm like, what, I know? Yeah. Nah, that would be a sign that they were very unwell. Yeah. Uh, what do I need, if anything? I don't know that you do need anything. I mean, you could pull up your smarts, just in case. I think I might be good on smarts. I'm like, should I do smarts or, like, boldness just because it's my lowest? I really don't know what the stat requirements are for this, because I didn't search hard enough. It's fine, it's fine. Um... Yeah, okay, into the woods. That day, while hiking through the woods, you find a tree with the words J plus S forever carved on it. Aww. Then another tree, you find J is a liar and a cheating hoe. That's less cute. Then on yet another tree, you find S, I know you banged like 12 people abroad in Europe, don't dish what you can't take. On the last tree, S stalks is J. It turns out J lives on 7889 plus two sparks lane. Boy, you sure can learn a lot from trees. What? Wow. Well, that's all dumb BS compared I mean, to what it you is. really just can't afford. <laughs> Heartfelt moments with your synthetic crush, Calculester. You slip away at the first possible moment so you can spend the afternoon with him, romantically going through a book of photographs and telling him which ones are facing. Aww. He leans in to get a higher resolution view of one of the images. Bring his face within inches of your face. The moment is unmistakable. You lean in and kiss him tenderly on the screen. It tastes like television. You <laughs> rub your lips and tongue passionately across the slightly warm glass surface, but he's not kissing you back. <laughs> he's a TV. What oh. are you doing, Puka? Are you attempting to clean my screen? Allow me to provide you with a moist disinfectant wipe. No. You explain, a bit embarrassed, that you were trying to kiss him. Oh, a kiss. I am delighted to add this to my tally of formative adolescent experiences. And yet, although I like you very much, I cannot help but think that this kiss was not as arousing for me as it was for you. Kissing, you see, requires a mouth, which I do not have. I am glad that the hyper-realistic mouth on my screen fooled you, but it is only a simulacrum. I experience similar problems when attempting eating, and don't even get me started on pooping. You'd rather not. It's already kind of ruining your romantic mood. What you really need is some other way to emotionally, physically connect with Tatsuda. What's the robotic equivalent of smooching? Come on, you spent your whole horny life training for a situation like this. Okay, so the three and a half, three and a half inch floppy is charm, and whisper beautiful numbers to each other is smarts. I mean, I was gonna say whisper beautiful numbers to each other anyways, because that's adorable. Like, come on. Yeah, that's true. Who doesn't like reciting pie to each other? In what nerd hasn't done that at least once? Or similar, indeed. Yeah. Beautiful numbers. Goodness, Puka, I didn't realize we'd reached that stage in our relationship. If kissing is anything like math, then I am beginning to understand why organics are so obsessed with it. Come, friend Puka, stare into my simulated eyes and tell me a beautiful number. <laughs> That's adorable! Oh. Yeah, start with a classic. Five, three, one, eight. Zero, zero, eight. That took oh. me a minute, but I got there, unfortunately. Childhood. <sighs> Sixth grade, really. Mm, how naughty. Personally, I'm a fan of the so-called sexy primes. Any pair of primes which differ by exactly six. 
11 and 17 are particularly raunchy, don't you think? Not as raunchy as 01010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010010
I can't help but think about it a little. Let's say we end up having a love arc together. What would make it interesting? What's the hook? I love this! It's weird, but I love it. Huh, Amazing. you've been so busy chasing after love interests all summer that you've never reflected on how good of a love interest you'd be yourself. Any ideas, Pengu? How can we get the audience to see you the way that I do? <gasps> all right, this feels very much like it is in the date territory. Yeah. Okay, so some is, uh, summon a version of yourself is smarts, and go for the classic drama is charm. And I have slightly more charm! Go for the classic drama of love versus family. Convince this season's big bad to adopt you as their child. Whoa, you want to be the adopted child of this season's main villain? Pengu, that is dramatic gold. Our big bad this season is known only as the Duke of Pestilence, and apparently he's planning his ascendance into evil godhood. Oops, uh, spoilers, by the way. If you can legally become his adopted child, then I can guarantee you the spot as this season's romantic interest for a big, juicy love arc. Oh my god. Yes! There's no time to lose! You race off to the dark castle where the Duke of Pestilence bides his time, waiting to begin his evil plan. You burst into the Duke's inner chamber. Hey! What the hell? Ever heard of knocking? Anyway, I guess I should ask who you are and what you want and whatever. Ugh, now I'm all thrown off. You tell the Duke that you want him to adopt you. Shockingly, he seems interested. He also seems old and gross and cartoonishly evil, but hey, no father is perfect. So, you want me to be your father, huh? I've always wanted an heir. Just imagine, you could be kidnapped as leverage and I could coldly refuse to pay your ransom. <laughs> and maybe we could play that ancient folk game, Catch! I've heard that it's good fun. I murdered my own father before we ever got the chance to play it together. This is an excellent idea, you fool. Or should I say, my child? I'll get the adoption paperwork started. I like to write my legal contracts on parchment made from panda flesh. <laughs> what the fuck is happening in this game? <laughs> yes! You're so close! Just one signature from the Duke and you'll be Joy's romantic lead for the whole season! You can practically taste that sweet, sweet love arc! Wait a moment, my tiresome heir! Do you actually want me to be a loving father figure and role model for you? Or do you just want to score a date with Joy, leader of the coven and my loathsome enemy? I know it seems kind of crazy to ask, but the last two people who asked me to adopt them were just scamming me to get a juicy arc with the coven. I was heartbroken. You assure him that you're only here for that good, good fatherhood. Ah, excellent! Then I shall be your legal father before the sun sets on the fortnight. Bwahaha! Let's celebrate with the chalice of orphan's blood! Yes! You'll soon have a date with Joy, and you can't wait to see the fan art this season. You feel a little bit lot of li you feel a little bit bad about lying to the Duke of Pestilence, but <laughs> then again, he's trying to sacrifice 18 innocent teens so he can gain the powers of an eldritch god. Fuck him! Your flawless scheming earns you three smarts. Oh, good! Sweet. You need those. Jackie Lester, let's look at the stars. Yes. All right, Joy, do we get to have a love arc? You finally gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. What's that? You want to be my summer fling? You know, Pengu, I think our romance might just be predestined by fate. I can't deny our chemistry, and you do make a good world saving, a great world saving sidekick. Perhaps this was always my destiny. You highly doubt it, but yay! Joy said yes. Oh, that's so cute! Oh my gosh! Ah! The meteor shower was magical. You showed interest in the many times Joy has saved reality, and she loved to share the stories with you. She even showed you many of the magic weapons and arcane artifacts from her adventures. And you ended up learning that at least three of them can be used as toys. That was great! Hi. Okay. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. You desire a summer fling with me? 
I am so happy. I must admit I've been intrigued by you lately. So I ran 62 simulations of us going to the meteor shower together. One of us died in only three of them. Believe it or not, that is actually a very good statistic. For the most part, the outcomes were very satisfying and overall nice. So, to quote myself in most of my simulations, Yes, Puka, let us be summer things. Would you like to hold each other while the sun sets? Babies. The last day of camp was delightful. Look at all the little friends zonking out too. Yes! I love your character's little friends. They're so cute, the little shadow dudes. You held hands with Calculuster during the meteor shower. He wished for the two of you to be together forever. You told Calculuster and asked what he wished for. He told you he had a hard time understanding the basis for wishing when an asteroid passed within your sight. The logic of the ritual seemed very wrong. But while still holding hands, he added that if he had the capacity to make wishes, he would also have wished for you two to be together. Aww. Aww, indeed. Oh my, my total runs stats are... In case anyone doubted that this was my very first time playing the game. Evidence. Yeah. There we go. That was so fun. I liked it. I still have I still feel like we have uh endings yet to uncover in prom, but I will be excited to move on to this one. Yeah. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Like Broken that. hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find. While gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. That is sweet AF! Oh my gosh! I can still close my eyes and I'm there, on that last summer night, feeling like I was just starting to live life. I bet this is the song that would be different if I... Yeah. With all my friends around that campfire, so young and unafraid, and so ready to start. <gasps> this is even better than Polaroids. Oh my gosh, your little friend is is playing my guitar. Friends. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, this is so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I love Dolly. Oh, oh that's cute. We need to get green and violet at this point. That's cute. clearly canon. Oh, so cute! <laughs> Amazing. What the heck is that? She's selling her scout badges!
my gosh, the song I'm hearing though. Streaming Monster Cam! Playing Monster Cam! Making terrible things. One that just got both away. Kimmy, Drian, Marty, oh my god, guys. Holly! The, the stream friendly song is super funny. I yes. Oh my goodness, you and Dahlia oh, with Dory! Like it's very easy to headcan and that was literally from that scene. Yes! Oh my goodness, that was so joyful. I love everything about it! That was so cute. I love everything about it. Oh my goodness. You've just unlocked Ko-Fi Beats to relax slash study to. As did I. Excellent. I have new stuff in the gallery. Oh, that was so fun. All right, we're definitely ending the stream here, but I loved it. Oh, there's a meta oh. shop? Wait, 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 wait. I can I can check the variations so I can see Calculester or you know, or um, Joy with all of the characters. Oh, that's cute. Did you, there, there's a meta shop. You can buy things in it. I don't know what they do. Here in the meta shop, we don't accept money. We buy and trade with summer memories instead. You'll earn summer memories every time you encounter a new event outcome, secret ending, or special thing in Monster Oh game. my. What are special things, you ask? Well, trust me, you'll know one when you've seen one. Don't fret, oh, you'll like get memories. Oh, it's like the shop, except the narrator is. Yeah, it's, it's a shop run by narrator. narrator. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, all right, so the thing that you just explained. Tutorial guide, new outfit packs, gallery content, and drinks. Modius playable character. The cat pack. Some of these are zero. Oh, they're free upgrades. Yeehaw pack. Are you ready for some good old Wild West adventures? All right, I'm buying all of the zero things. Yes, please. Yeah. And cat mode. Yes, please. Back to the 80s. Oh, a pl a relevant to that one event you got? Yup. Maze man outfit. And yeehaw! Right, some of these are like, just... Okay, so... Okay, most of those are sketch packs. I need to save up for more of this nonsense. You can play as a fridge. Classic fairy tales outfit pack. Oh, I want that. Aw. Save it up for that. Drinking game that mode. That would be outfit pack also sounds adorable. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, we got some stuff to save up for. All right. All righty. This was super fun. I'm glad we did this. Me too. All righty. I'm gonna... Let's see. Turn this down a little. And I'm with that, our, I am going to call the stream. Thank you, everybody, anyone. And thank you, Artemisia, for hanging out with us and chatting. Um, thank you, anyone else who's been watching or lurking and anyone who's watching this later. We appreciate you all very, very much. And don't forget to check out my, my friend and co-streamer, Pukara. Uh, if you are watching this as a VOD, you can see Pukara's name in the title. Yes. Or the description, and or the description, probably both. Yes. Did you look at the backgrounds and gal gallery, and did you notice you can click variation to see different shenanigans? Um, no. I'll you check that for you. Look at all the Zoe ones. But feel free to end stream. Like. Yes, yes. Okay, sorry, sorry. You're right. You're right. We'll check this out off stream. Sorry, sorry, people watching. All right. So with that, good night.